All righty. I don't know how many people can see my screen, but I wanted to show you some cool stuff going on in Hyperledger Ursa. So Ursa is a cryptographic library, so it's not like I have a ton to quote unquote demo. So I thought I'd walk you through it, and then I did want to show you um, it's issuing a credential of the CL signature because that seems to be the number one feature that people love about Ursa. Um, right now, Ursa is in the middle of some reorganization. So the old folder, which we call Ursa, is in here. There's some advanced cryptographic features in what we used to call ZMix. That's going to go away, but it has like the BBS Plus signature, Punch Level Sender signature. It's got verifiable encryption and uh, delegatable signatures, but we're going to reorganize all that. And But the main thing most people are interested in is the CL signatures, which are found in here. And here's all the classes. So rather than uh, walk you through all of that, I wanted to just uh, demo one thing. Let's see here. Yeah, here we go. So if you're not familiar with how what a CL signature is, CL signatures are a type of multi-message uh, signature, meaning you can sign as many messages as you want with the into the signature. And what it allows you to do is selectively disclose any number of those messages. So I can choose to reveal some of them, or I can choose to reveal all of them, or anything in between. The other cool thing about the CL signature is I can do what's called a range proof. So I don't want to reveal the attribute entirely, but I encoded it as a number and I want to prove it's over some number like 18 for my age, or maybe it's uh, the balance on my account when I was issued the credential and I want to prove it's greater than something without revealing the actual number. So that's what you kind of see with this, what's called predicates. So you can go greater than or equal, less than or equal, greater than or less than. Um, but most of the time, you're not going to uh, working directly with those too much because usually this is wrapped for you in other libraries. But in case you ever did want to, here's, here's an example of multiple predicates where the issuer creates what's called a schema. This is what describes what that credential looks like. So... In our case, we're saying funds sold and securities purchased and a bunch of other kind of numeric terms, right? Something you might see on a stock option sheet or a balance sheet. And we're going to issue a credential to it. And we call it a master secret, but it doesn't have to be called that. It could be called anything. What this is saying is this is going to be tied to an identifier that only the that person knows and it's never disclosed to anyone, but they can prove that all of their credentials are linked to the same identity. So that's what this is for. And now that we have our schema, we're right here, we're just plugging in numbers. You can see I just put in raw digits. They're pretty simple. And then I go through and uh, this is uh, just kind of the multi-step phase to get the credential because right now it depends on the two-phase uh, system where the prover does something first, then sends that to the issuer saying, yes, I accept the credential, among other things. And then when he gets it back, the prover finalizes it because it's what we call a blinded signature such that the issuer can't impersonate uh, the prover in that, in that way because he never knew what the signature was in the first place. Now comes the cool stuff. So now we can create all sorts of these uh, proofs. See, I want to prove that this is less than or equal to 100 and prove this one and, and a whole bunch of others. And we can create a proof and then send that on to a verifier. Now, you'll notice this is all in one function. So when the prover is done here, he would send that on, not you wouldn't just have this all in one function. So... Um, so by running a cargo test, you can actually see this because this is all in Rust. So if you're not familiar with Rust, that's okay. We uh, are implementing a bunch of wrappers and language wrappers like Node and C Sharp or Java. There's a bunch more in there. 
uh, that are on their way. Okay, so Ursa is mostly implemented and wrapped in, say, Lib Ares or the Ares project in Indy. They both use it, and uh, there's some other Hyperledger projects that do, and then Transact is one of them, and I think Sawtooth was going to, but I don't. But I think their adoption is on hold. There's lots of other things that you can do with Ursa, such as like what's called a key exchange. That's what this is for. Um, you can do other types of signatures in here, like ED519, BLS, uh, the Bitcoin, uh, ECDSA curve. This is so you can use just a common interface and you don't have to uh, reformat or do things uh, in your normal code. If we happen to change an underlying dependency under the hood, that might be more secure and what you might want to use. So... But these are the three most common signatures used in blockchains, and that's what Libursa supports is blockchains. So there's some stuff in here that's not quite entirely blockchain-based, but um, like there's symmetric crypto that's implemented in here. Here's kind of two NIST-approved signatures, and these two are um, like if you're a Libsodium person, then these are compatible with Libsodium. All right. Cool thing about Ursa is it's been, uh, there's been a lot of eyes on this uh, cryptography code. So uh, it's underway to get audited. But in the meantime, there's been lots of cryptographers and crypto engineers that have looked at this and made sure everything is accurate. And so you shouldn't have to worry about whether it's insecure backdoors. If you want to look for backdoors, this code's open source, so you can look at it yourself. So... Um, as far as running tests or anything else, this is Rust. So anything that you can do um, from the command line will work. These are just running everything. FFI stands for Foreign Function Interface. So if you're going to wrap it and go to C, this is what you would use. Um, this is demoing what it looks like for revocation or just a plain demo. I will walk you through that code here now. So what that is doing with CL signatures is one, one of the things is if you want to do, um, if you want to issue a, a verifiable credential, it's pretty important to be able to revoke a credential. Let's say there's just bad data in it. Or in the case, say, think of a driver's license. They've committed too many DUIs. So now I want to make sure the credential is completely and utterly useless. Um, or in the visual world, that's a little hard because there's not a centralized database necessarily that everybody checks and you may want to prevent correlation. So what I'm doing is I'm searching for the test. So just give me a second while I find it. Uh, I think it's called demo. Yeah, here we go. So here's an example of a credential that just has kind of some basic attributes about someone that are going to get signed in there. But it also keeps track of what's called um, a, a revocation ID. Now, in zero knowledge, we check that this credential has not been revoked in such a way that whoever is verifying it doesn't see um, the exact ID that was checked. It just knows, is it in the set or not? So think of it as a set membership check where you don't know which element out of, say, 10 million was checked but you do know whether that element was in one of those 10 million. So if it had been revoked, um, it wouldn't be in the set. That proof would fail. So in that sense, um, we have a whole bunch of kind of proofs going on here. And so how, how this all works is, remember the CL signatures? We're selectively disclosing some attributes to a verifier. We're never revealing the exact signature. We're, we're presenting what's called a zero-knowledge proof of a signature. And we're presenting a zero-knowledge proof that it's in its uh, revocation ID is in a set that hasn't been revoked. And some other numbers like age and height are greater than some thing. So there's a, quite a bit of uh, zero-knowledge proofs going on here. So Ursa has a lot of zero knowledge proof stuff. That's probably the one thing it has to offer over any other library. This is, is what's actually replacing uh, CL signatures called BBS plus. If you've uh, been involved in this community for a while, this is where the code it has been written and maintained is in here. And 
It works very similar to CL signatures, except that it's much smaller and it's faster than CL signatures. So pretty cool. Here's the source code if you want to use it. If you don't care, you can go to one of the other wrappers that say Matter Global has done. With that, I wanted to leave the last five minutes for questions. Are there any questions? Them or chat it. see still loading. can you go through how all the zkps are aggregated into a single proof yes because <laughs> that <coughs> um let's start with uh the cl signature because that's what most people care about so the cl signature um we have what's called an aggregated proof and this is what's called a Schnorr proof. And so there's a bunch of other proofs. Say, you know, you've got your zero knowledge proof of a signature, your revocation check, all your range proofs, your selectively disclosed attributes. There's a whole bunch of all those proofs. So each one of those is a proof. And then when you say aggregate into a single proof, there is one, what we call a Schnorr proof that kind of combines them all together. And that is what you check in addition to the individual ones. Because the individual ones, like you might have some pass and some fail, but then there's an overall proof that will fail if any one of those has been modified or tampered to make sure it stays accurate. Which language wrapper do you plan to implement in the near future? Um, it depends on demand. So the highest demand ones are Node, uh, a C wrapper, which can then go to C Sharp or Java, .NET. So those are probably the most the ones we want. I'm not sharing my screen any. Yeah, not anymore. Any other questions? Why do we check? Because the overall proof could still succeed even if one of the other little individual proofs fails. So let me give you an example. I could do a range proof, which the proof itself has not been tampered with, but um, the, the value I'm checking it against, let's say I'm greater than 18, if that might fail, but the overall proof still succeeds. So meaning the, the signature was still valid, Everything else about was valid. I'm just not over 18, for example, in that case. Ending in one minute. Uh, Dan, CL signature in Ursa Plus equals original CL plus range proof. CL signatures support range proofs. So as far as we know, we are the only CL signature um, that's open source. There is one in ID Mix, but it's not open source. All right, with that, that's the end of the session. Any other questions, feel free to contact me outside this on Rocket Chat. Thanks.